It's a couple minutes after six. We'll go ahead and get started. As people enter, they can listen in on the uh, presentation as well. So I'll start from by introducing myself. My name is Taylor Hanrath. I'm the Acting Manager of Infrastructure here at the County of Renfrew. Also in attendance from the county is our Director of Public Works, Lee. And we as well have our Acting Capital Projects Coordinator, Justin Schauer, and our Supervisor of Technical Services, Mike Bean. And from JL Richards, we have Tyler, who's our design engineer, and Aaron, who's the planner assigned to this project. So I'll start by giving a bit of background on the project. Uh, whenever we were doing evaluations of our county structure, the culvert that the road travels over near the dam, we realized that the dam was in some a deteriorated condition. After some studies, we found that the county was the owner of the dam. Up until 2018, we were not aware. We were under the impression that the dam was un under private ownership. Once we found that the county was the owner of the dam, we began the A process and solicited the services of JL Richards to evaluate the dam through the environmental assessment process using a municipal class environmental assessment. Through their assessment, they have looked at three options. The first option being do nothing. And this option is looked at as part of the environmental assessment process. However, at this time, the county doesn't view this as a viable option given the condition of the dam. So the two viable options in the county's opinion are replacement of the dam or decommissioning of the dam or removal of the dam. At this time, there's not a preferred option. We're evaluating the options based on the analysis and this Tonight, this public information center is part of that analysis. Uh, we welcome comments throughout, comments on any information you hear tonight, but we ask that you hold your comments until the end of the presentation. And as we have a number of participants and it's a virtual uh, setup, we ask that you remain muted until the end of the, the presentation whenever it comes time for comments. With that, I'll go to JLR and they can begin their presentation. So hi everyone, I'm Erin. I'm the planner with JL Richards that's been assigned to this project. And I'm just gonna briefly run over uh, the uh, environmental assessment process for this project. So environmental assessments are a planning and decision-making tool that are used to review and consider all environmental impacts of the project uh, before a decision is made. There are three different types or schedules of environmental assessments. There's the Schedule A, Schedule B, and Schedule C. Schedule A are for projects with little adverse environmental impacts. Schedule B are for projects with some adverse environmental impacts. And Schedule C's are for projects that have the potential for significant environmental impacts. This project's been identified as a Schedule B environmental assessment, again, meaning that there's the potential for some adverse environmental impacts. As this is a Schedule B project, we are only subject to phases one and phase two in this flowchart and then can bypass phase three and four and head to implementation if everything goes well. So in phase one, this is the problem or opportunity phase. And in this phase, we identified uh, the problem, which was the deteriorating state of the dam. There's also discretionary public consultation. So this is for projects that are viewed to have, um, to be a little bit more contentious or projects that we think that public will want a lot of involvement in. So there's the potential for consultation then. We are towards the bottom of phase two. Phase two is the alternative solution. So here we identified the alternative solutions to address the problem, that being the deteriorating state of the dam. So as Taylor mentioned, the three options that were looked at was the do nothing, uh, decommissioning of the dam, and the replacement of the dam. Moving through phase two, um, we had to identify the we did a review of the physical description of the area. So we looked at the natural, social, economic, um, and environmental uh, items that were there and things that could impact the project. We also looked at the different positive and negative effects that each of these options could have if they were followed through and evaluated them. We are now at the yellow box that says we are here, which is our public consultation, um, which is tonight at our pick. 
Um, this is the opportunity for the public to provide more comments on the project. This presentation is going to provide an overview of all of the information that's been collected to date. And as Taylor mentioned, you can provide comments and questions at the end. We've also been in consultation with different review agencies like the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks and MNRF who are reviewing um, the work that's also been done to date. Following tonight's presentation, um, we will be identifying our preferred solution and this takes into consideration all of the research that's been done to date as well as all of the input that we've received from our commenting agencies and the public. Following that, we'll package everything up into a project file which will be available um, for 30 days. And then from there, as mentioned, the county, if they choose to, can move forward with implementation of the project. So that's probably a lot of information. This slide is just a brief summary of environmental assessment for Schedule B, which is data collection and review, identifying the problem and solutions, um, and evaluating them, consulting with the public, and then preparing our EA document, which has everything in it that's been done throughout the entire course of the project. That's environmental assessment. And I'll turn it over to Tyler for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, for, for the first thing that we'll be discussing will be the description of the existing structure. Um, as most of you are probably aware, uh, as most of you are residents of the area, uh, the dam uh, is just to the east of, of the Forester Falls. Um, it's an adjacent to a culvert that is deteriorating, as uh, Taylor said, and uh, we're just looking at the dam. If we're in this case, the, the culvert will be done uh, previously. As Aaron mentioned, we are currently in process of an environmental assessment. It, it is not concluded. We're still going through all the studies. We're still going through everything. So as part of this uh, structural uh, condition or uh, inspection was performed for this. Uh, the dam was built in 1935. Um, I'm, I think that some of you are not aware of is that uh, this is not the original dam that came with the mill. Uh, this, uh, this dam that is in place right now is actually uh, was uh, a replacement of the original dam. Uh, it's got two concrete spillways with timber lo stop logs where, uh, as far as we know, have not been touched in, in several years. Uh, since the county has no records of it and uh, we don't we didn't find any records of anybody else uh, and, uh, playing around with the with, with the stop logs usually with stop logs you control the uh, the head wall or the, the head pond water level and rotate the logs to minimize the deterioration uh, with the, the stop logs remaining in place for so long you, there's a concern with the bottom stop logs um, deteriorating a bit, a bit faster than the ones at the top. Um, so th that's the concern that we have right now. Uh, on top of that, there's a, quite a bit of moderate to severe concrete scaling and also in disintegration. Uh, if you see from these pictures, um, if I turn on my pointer for a laser pointer, uh, there's deterioration here uh, at the bottom of the sluice uh, quite a bit of disintegration here uh, along the walls. Um, this is the top view from the roadway as well as these. Um, we couldn't get a good picture due to health and safety. We didn't go into the water um, at the point. But if you look closely at, at this picture here, you can see that the gains, which is a tim timber in this case, which holds the stop logs back, um, is rotting and starting to deteriorate. Um, so in, in this case, the, the, the concern is of flooding. So that's why we're doing the pick this year and didn't want to wait till next year when we could uh, potentially knock on wood, do this in person, uh, which is always the preferred option, but kind of because of COVID, we're kind of stuck with it, uh, with, with doing it this way. But there is a concern of dam failure and we don't know when it's going to be right now. Uh, it appears to be stable, but we don't know if it's going to if it's going to be next year or the year after. Uh, so we're monitoring it and we're making sure that we're no big surprises. But we we would like to ad address this right away. And this comes into the into play regarding the options. So in this case, uh, the do not nothing option, um, which is 
uh, continued passive operations in this case, um, yearly inspections, monitoring of the area, as well as making sure that no uh, extreme events happen. Uh, there's a continued risk of dam break and potential flooding. Uh, that's a concern with any dam, but with the deteriorated state that it is currently, um, it, it's more of a, of a risk in, in this case. So the, I know a lot of people were concerned about the do nothing and would prefer that option of, with the fact that we're offering it, but the do nothing is to provide scale and also is a, is a requirement for the e, per the EA process. Um, as Taylor said, this is not an option that we'd like to think that it's viable, mostly just because nobody uh, would like the, the dam to break or have flooding downstream and lose the head pond, which appears to be a concern for most residents. Uh, option two is the decommissioning and the reinstatement of natural waterway. Uh, this option includes an A and B option. Uh, this would remove the dam completely while the culvert will stay in place in order to keep the roadway functioning and gradually remove the water within the existing head pond. Uh, because there's an A and B option, the, the option A is passive um, method, which with the drawdown of the head pond, uh, it's more of a wait and see kind of, of option where you remove the, the water and see how the nature uh, goes. So basically run its course where you let the water run at, in terms of a, of a stream as it was prior to the mill being uh, put into, uh, into the work. Uh, act of while, while you're doing that, you're monitoring uh, the bends, you're monitoring the slope and the embankments, monitoring the fish, you're monitoring basically everything to make sure that everything works uh, well. The option B is the active uh, me method where you would design a new waterway. You would design the whole stream to, uh, to the uh, extent that is required. Neither of these options have been um, reviewed at this time. Um, that, by that I mean we did, we did not do a preliminary design for the, the waterway. Uh, it, it's a very extensive design a very expensive design where if we were not to provide this option, it would be a pretty big investment in terms of uh, the county. Um, the active design waterway is possible that it would have to happen if the passive way, so option a, uh, 2A, where the passive, we see a concern while monitoring, we're seeing that the water is not going where we, where we want it to be or there's slope stability uh, issues, then we would have to jump into the active. So there's a bit of risk with the passive regarding uh, financial and environmental. Uh, the remove, remove and replace, which is the complete, uh, option three, which is complete removal of the dam, replacing it with a new concrete weir of similar size of property. So instead of doing stop logs, we would replace it all with concrete where the concrete would just allow flow to overtop as it does now. Um, basically there's very minimal change for the overall area because the dam would be acting as it is right now. The only uh, environmental impacts that we have would be the construction uh, method. So the excavation, we have to uh, consult with DFO because we'll be within the waterway with potential fish habitat uh, disturbances. Uh, we with any design for any of these options, um, um, or two and three, continued uh, discussions with MNRF, MECP. Uh, in this case, there's no conservation authority, but the county, the township of Whitewater, the residents, it, it, it's all still going to continue during design. So with, with the remove and replace, um, we do have a preliminary uh, we're option that we're presenting as part of this option. However, it's not final. Um, it, could, it could change design uh, whenever further st uh, studies are finalized as well as uh, performed. So uh, we will continue with the uh, studies completed. So we have a number of studies have completed. We are currently uh, following the uh, Lakes and Rivers Improvement Act uh, established uh, 
by uh, MNRF, I believe, where um, for any project such as this, they would have to, uh, there's a clear method to pr proceed. So uh, these options, do, these studies were completed. Um, we see the geotechnical report, a sediment quality investigation, species at risk, DFO. There has been concern about groundwater resource, um, the, the terrestrial wildlife vegetation, uh, sediment, all, all that. Um, there is, was also concern with the cultural heritage. Uh, we've received a number of con uh, comments regarding that. So uh, we've selected a few of these studies to provide uh, a bit of background information or uh, insight on the reports. Uh, most, if not all, the reports are currently in draft mode uh, while we are consulting with MNRF and MECP. Uh, we are awaiting comments from them currently. We have preliminary conversations with them, but they're still uh, reviewing all the reports as um, most of the reports were completed mid-October uh, uh, due to timing windows for the uh, species at risk screenings. So we'll start with the uh, the geomorphic impact assessment. So the geomorphic impact assessment is basically the streamed uh, uh, flow and the, and the stream bed. Um, the head pond uh, goes to about 2.5 kilometers uh, south of the dam itself right now. Uh, that's the impact area or preliminary for as we are doing our studies. Uh, obviously, further studies will be required depending on which option uh, we proceed with. Um, at the dam itself, where, as most people have, may, may have seen, there's, there's a bedrock shelf right there. The dam is built on bedrock. But it, as you go upstream uh, and downstream a bit as well, you'll see there's a, there's, like, there's a lot of sand and cobbles. Um, it, we did some sampling of, of the stream bed as well. And um, the impacts, uh, the options are, are mostly based on this report. Um, as Aaron mentioned, most of the reports or all the reports will be all bundled up in our project file, which will be should be available in December if uh, MNRF and MECP consultation uh, proceeds in timely fashion, and uh, it will be open on the website for. A total of 30 days as per the environmental assessment. So this report continues uh, to say uh, that the, there's three options. Obviously the do nothing is a dam break. Um, it would impact a creek, a creek upstream and downstream as uh, a flooding event. Uh, there's two different variables for flooding event. There's the daylight flooding and the uh, flood, uh, um, sorry, my, uh, I'm lost the words right now. Um, for a flooding event or a daylight event, a daylight flood uh, break is when a normal situation, uh, the dam just fails based on deterioration or the flooding event where it's high water, um, either from um, snow melt or heavy rainfall where the dam breaks while the, the, the head pond is at a high level. Uh, either case, it does impact the, the stream on both sides. Um, it becomes a, a rush of water as any flooding event. Th this is a, a smallish dam compared to any hydroelectric dam that you notice. So there is impact. Uh, the impact mostly is the loss of the head pond, as well as some concerns downstream. The water level um, will not be increasing by that much, uh, relatively speaking anyways. And um, there, there's no uh, houses or structures downstream except for a via rail, or no CN rail, sorry, uh, bridge that is has a quite high elevation so may not be impacted. So in this case, the dam do nothing, uh, it would impact the green decommissioning. There are, are several options uh, to mitigate any impacts. Uh, to have it properly designed uh, does very well. Uh, we do need further studies to manage the upstream sediment, um, which uh, requires um, excavation and reinstatement of, of sediment and backfilling. 
and remove or replace, well, there's hardly any concerns because it's going to be existing, uh, sorry, existing options. Uh, the surface water quality. So in this case, um, there was no big concerns with the surface water uh, besides some uh, runoffs a bit from the agricultural uh, systems upstream. Um, there are two um, environments in this case. Uh, there's the cool water downstream and the cold water uh, upstream. Uh, this creates, uh, the dam creates a, a barrier basically for the environments for different, uh, the, the, the animals and for the vegetation. In this case, uh, this is more factual. Uh, there's no big, big concerns regarding uh, the water quality. There's no big red flags, so we weren't uh, very, uh, no, no big concerns. Uh, the water quality has was taken from May to October. I think it was four samples to make sure that it's uh, consistent over, over time. Uh, sediment quality is uh, a lot of sampling in the, in the area that we performed. Uh, pardon me, I just got to admit this person into the call. Um, yes, there's a lot of sampling. Uh, again, this is a factual slide, I guess, uh, regarding what the information, no big uh, concerns uh, again. Um, although if we were to remove the sediment, we would have to uh, properly manage it. We can't just, it's not, it would not be considered clean fill and we would also have to dry it out before going. Um, one concern that there was is that if a flooding event would happen, a lot of sediment would wash out with it, while if we do a gradual, it's less of an issue. Um, obviously, we do have a sediment quality report that will be provided with the uh, project file. Uh, the fish habitat assessment. Um, the upstream Brooms Creek considered uh, slow warm water um, for with abundant aquatic vegetation. Downstream is cool water, so not necessarily cold. We did do temperature readings uh, over the year to uh, confirm all that information. Uh, the oxygen levels uh, appear to be, uh, or sorry, the, the dissolved oxygen levels seem to be low, but the fish uh, in the head pond uh, are considered tolerant. Uh, we are discussing with DFO currently um, for for this project. Oh, I have sorry, Robert. Okay, so um, yeah, so the, the fish has, uh, habitat assessment. Obviously, there's mitigation uh, methods to lessen the impact on it uh, on the fish. Um, several. Um, uh, different options that can be implemented depending on which option they are. Uh, the options would be considered more in depth once uh, if the county proceeds with the option two of decommissioning the dam. Um, we will be discussing with MNRF with what they are accepting, MECP as well and DFO. All of this um, will be above board and we're hoping to uh, to meet all requirements and make everyone happy. And that, that's the, the, the biggest takeaway for this. Um, we do, do not want to seriously harm any fish and we want to make sure that everyone's happy. Uh, groundwater resource impact assessment. So there are several um, monitoring wells in the in Forester Falls. And uh, we were monitoring, or the, this was performed by GemTech. I should have mentioned that as well, I guess. Uh, GemTech has, is our environmental uh, subconsultant uh, performing the, the work. Uh, they have, uh, they are biologists and they also have a hydro, hydrology department. So the groundwater resource impact assessment have monitored the wells and it seems, or it appears that the main water supply is an aquifer that's currently below the head, uh, the, the bedrock or the first layer of the bedrock. So it, it is unlikely that the 
drainage of the head pond would impact any wells in the area. Um, I know that's this was a, a concern for some people. Um, so that this that's the result from that, that report. Obviously, the report again will be available uh, on the in the project file. Uh, wildlife and vegetative habitat assessment. Um, our, the Gentex biologists have been on site several times. Um, you may have seen them on site uh, trekking through the woods or uh, along the, the stream. Um, so there was some targeting, targeted uh, uh, assessments and surveys, of specifically the basking turtles, uh, the wood turtles, uh, because both of them have been historically mentioned um, as being uh, in the area. Uh, we did a two season vegetation survey, one in the fall, uh, we just completed and one in the spring and the migratory waterfowl, which was also the provide, uh, performed early October, I believe. Uh, so the results confirm that there is quite a significant habitat for overwinter turtles uh, for the staging migratory waterfowl, fowl, which uh, we have received several comments regarding uh, birds being within the area. A foraging habitat for birds and bats um, and it's considered a local wetland. Um, regarding vegetation, there wasn't any um, high uh, there wasn't any veg uh, plants that were considered of a high degree of conservation value. Um, there weren't any special species at risk that can't be relocated or found nearby. Um, regarding the downstream vegetation, um, no big concerns uh, either. Uh, obviously, if a flooding event would were to happen, um, would be a, a concern. So to do nothing again would be not an option uh, regarding the vegetation community and the uh, threshold. Um, we did a desktop, or Gemtech did a desktop species at risk assessment. Um, with the desktop screening, there was 11 species at risk that have been found on site within the project of four avians, four mammalian, uh, one plant and five reptilian. Uh, this includes the historical ones that uh, some residents have uh, offered observations to uh, the MNRF website. Uh, we've done targeted field surveys, as I said before, and um, no big concerns except for uh, obviously the 11 species that we mentioned. Um, any medication me measures, obviously our first priority is to uh, adhere to the, uh, to the Species at Risk Act, as well as making sure that no uh, heavy impacts uh, to the habitat nor the animals. Uh, in general, happens while, uh, within the uh, the area of uh, impact. The cultural heritage report uh, was performed uh, by a heritage consultant, um, little no. Um, they did a, a nice nice report of the heritage of Forester Falls, the region prior to Forester Falls being in, in, uh, put in place. Uh, my understanding is that the name Forrester Falls, Forrester being the uh, owner of the, the mill at the time, um, Falls, the section was not confirmed on why the, or the Falls part was included, mostly because prior to the dam being in place, uh, there would have been some sort of falls or rapids, which could contribute to the name. And that's the um, assessment from the heritage consultant, which uh, is considered third party, no, no bias, just letting everyone know that. But uh, there was no evidence of what the dam was before or prior to 1935. So we were not too sure exactly what type of dam it was uh, that, that the current dam replaced. Uh, how big or what uh, if a culvert was still there at the time. So uh, that's that was just 
uh, the information that we found at the local library and the records that they were able to find. Uh, they were on site as well. Um, they did a pretty exhaustive report, which was uh, a nice read to learn about your town, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that was the, the cultural heritage. They've also provided an archaeological assessment. Um, they did a, a desktop review first, including with the heritage where looking at the history of the area. They've also done some test bits along the roadway and to, to see if there's any um, archaeological resources poten potential in the area. Uh, they weren't able to find anything. However, if anything were to be found uh, wh while excavating, like any other project, uh, they, they do ask that we, we call them. That's very typical for any project. If you find any uh, tools or something from a previous area, it's, it's very uh, recommended to, uh, to get an archaeologist, archaeologist on site to, uh, to determine the value and to catalog everything that they can. Um, the geotechnical inventory. So as I mentioned before, the dam itself is constructed on bedrock. Um, based on the current uh, water levels and the, uh, the water uh, velocity, uh, there's no immediate concerns of erosion. However, downstream, there's a few spots where slope stability is a concern. Uh, you, you don't necessarily have to go that far. Uh, if you go at this bend, you can see a bit of slope stability already a uh, concern. Um, just fill uh, running into the into the river. Um, if there was a, a, a flood event, uh, there's concerns regarding these bends, as well as the ones on the head pond where slope stability may be concerned for a, a, a very fast discharge of the head pond. So if the event that option two is, is, is proceeded with uh, regarding decommissioning of the dam, it is recommended uh, by the geotechnical engineer who's uh, a different division of Gentech to gradually uh, drain the head pond to uh, minimize risk. Uh, Hydrotechnical assessment. This is the uh, floodplain or the flooding map regarding uh, a dam failure. Uh, this was modeled in HECRAS, which is a, a, a hydro, uh, hydrology uh, system uh, program that uh, JLR uses uh, for uh, determining flooding uh, concerns and uh, for any projects that we per perform. As you can see, uh, for a flooding uh, event, the flooding doesn't affect that much, um, relatively speaking, obviously. Uh, if you own any land in this area, we're not saying it's not important. We're just saying that we're not damaging full cities or towns. Um, obviously, the the flooding will reach the Otto River. This is the Otto River over here. Um, this is based on aerial mapping that we that uh, Gem GeoProcess has performed, uh, as well as topographic uh, information that we received, as well as all the information that we, uh, we gathered on site. Uh, there is, of any flooding event, there is a high potential of uh, hazards uh, regarding loss of wildlife and aqua aquatic habitat, which is very typical for any uh, flooding event. Uh, however, there's no anticipated loss of life or property damage, mostly because it does not cross any uh, houses that we can see except for the via rail, which I believe is over here, or not via rail, sorry, CN rail uh, information, uh, bridge that is quite high, but there's always a concern with undermining of the abutments. So in, in that case, um, we, we would let uh, via CN rail know um, at the time. Uh, the structural review. So because of the deterioration or the ongoing deterioration of the dam, uh, we, uh, we, it is currently in risk of failure. We do have a nice little rendering here of what the weir would look like. 
uh, as you can see, um, we, we would have the retaining walls on both sides with the weir going through. And um, it's not unlike that. It's very similar to what it is right now without the center sluice uh, going through. Uh, the repair of the existing dam is not really a viable option due to the deterioration of the concrete. You can replace large components of the dam, but it, will, it wouldn't be a, uh, a sufficient long-term uh, fix for this dam itself. So we are proposing to replace it as with passive reinforced concrete weir, which the, the level of the weir would be the exact same as the uh, stop logs currently. Uh, in this case, we show a new culvert, which um, may be a, a project that will be included uh, to save money, but that's a, a, a different conversation. But uh, this is what the anticipated look of it, I guess, would be regarding uh, a new, new pretty dam. So uh, we included an op options evaluation matrix for each option. Um, obviously, to do nothing has a pretty significant impact for most of these. Uh, as mentioned before, it's uh, regarding the flooding. Um, the, fi the financial for this one, we have it on two options. Uh, the, two op the, the two stages is more uh, the effects, not only the effect of the flooding itself, but the aftermath. Uh, with any dam failure, it is there's further concerns with uh, uh, regulatory authorities, so NR MNRF, as well as you would either have to redo all the designs in a rush to put a new dam there or, de or design a, a new uh, waterway. The decommission decommissioning, as mentioned before, there's a few, a few concerns um, regarding species at risk, obviously, it does have a lot of impacts. Um, if we were to just uh, do it without doing the mitigation measures, um, mitigation measures are always recommended uh, for, uh, for any project and it's recommended or it's required per DFO as well as MNRF, uh, in this case, MECP for species at risk. But it's the same for fish habitat and the surface water. So uh, again, the two options. Um, based on passive, passive obviously is much cheaper than doing the full design and uh, implementation of a new waterway. The replacement in this case uh, does have the least impact as is it's going to create the same, uh, same status quo as, as we would say. However, it is a, an expensive endeavor. Uh, yes, we do realize that these are three yellows. Uh, this would be more expensive uh, than these two options. It's just we wouldn't have 10 different colors, I guess, for in, in this matter. Um, this is a summary of mention, the mention of all the studies that we've provided, and as well as it's, it's going to be more detailed once we finalize all the, the reports, finish our consultations with the regulatory authorities, um, and it will be uh, a much more intricate matrix for the project file, uh, including your comments as well as part of, I think, uh, of this uh, matrix. So in the next steps, uh, uh, following this Public Information Center, we will review all the comments we receive to uh, finalize a preferred solution. Uh, we have received uh, uh, quite a few comments and phone calls from the public. Uh, comment sheets are still available on the website. Uh, and we, we invite you to submit questions, even if it says just we agree with option three or option one or wh whichever. Uh, it doesn't always have to be negative. I would like to implore you to have positive and negatives what you liked, what you don't like. Uh, if we only have negatives, uh, and you don't mention what you actually prefer or like, it doesn't count if it's not 
uh, written down. Uh, we will open the comments till December 7th. If you have already pro uh, provided comments and you would like to add more information, feel free to submit a, another comment sheet. Uh, we do read them all. We do discuss all of them. Uh, if there's any questions, we do uh, try to, to reach out as fast as we can. Uh, my understanding is that some people have reached out to different entities as well. Um, we don't have a big issue with that, but we do want to know everything because all your comments and information provided from every uh, comment sheet does get included in our project file. Um, it proves to the world um, and, the, and the agencies that yes, we did receive the comments. Yes, we acknowledge them. Yes, we, we did our best to uh, reach out and uh, satisfy all concerns. And this is what, what the, this public information center is mostly about is to be able to make everyone comfortable with uh, above board what the county is planning. Um, again, as mentioned, we did not uh, finalize the preferred solution. There's no information uh, regarding the preferred solution yet. Uh, until we have received comments from everyone to make sure that we are aware of the concerns of, of, of everything. I know I'm, I'm repeating myself a bit uh, regarding that, but we, I just want to make it clear that we want your comments. And uh, so, yeah, so proceeding with the recommended solution, we'll finalize the design. Uh, we'll prepare the, the project file, as Aaron had mentioned at the beginning. So that's going to be uh, a not a full report of what was discussed, all the options, why some options were were not considered viable, all the comments we received from all the MNRF, MECP, the, club, the public meetings with the township, meeting with residences, internal meetings, all the information is put into that. Um, we will publish a notice of study completion, letting everyone know that uh, we collected all the necessary information and letting everyone know that the project file will be available for public work record for 30 days. Um, subject to a, a favorable public review, uh, we'll, we'll proceed with detailed design for, of the preferred option and we'll uh, pro eventually proceed to tendering the construction. Uh, the design has not been started or completed at all. Uh, we're only doing the study right now. We're, we're, uh, we're figuring out all the, the options. Um, these are the three options that we came up with. There could be several other options. However, f as broadly as we can, just to make sure that everyone is, understands exactly what we're going for. So as mentioned, uh, please provide your comments by December 7th so that we can get a, a, the report finalized, as well as, as reach out to everyone that has concerns. And, and then we can uh, proceed with a, something that everyone will be satisfied with. So that concludes our presentation for the, the PIC. Um, I'm sure there's a few questions out there. I'll let Taylor uh, take over for this. Um, but I'm hoping that everyone is happy and that everyone is uh, informed on what's going on, what the plan is, and how things uh, will move on uh, from now on. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, so we're gonna open it up to comments and questions. As Tyler said, though, the best way to get your comments included in the overall report or is to submit a comment sheet. A uh, comment sheet can be found at the web link that was sent with the notice and I'll also post the link to the comment sheet in the chat. And just so all are aware, this session is being recorded so that it can be reviewed later as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but we are going to try to post it to the county website. So we have our first comment in the chat and we'll start with that one, our first question, sorry. 
Uh, Tyler, will any of the reports be available before the comment period is closed? If not, can a draft be requested for a specific report? Um, sure. Um, if, if obviously the, the, the reports are cur currently fluid as we have conversations with the regulatory uh, authorities, uh, it depends which report and how comfortable the consultant is to share it at this time. Uh, it is a draft report, so nothing is finalized. Um, it is possible that we would not be able to offer you that, that specific report. Um, I'm assuming um, the ones that are, are more um, important, I guess, for based on the comments we received would be the species at risk and the terrestrial surveys uh, as requested. Um, I will have to consult with the with the consultant to Gem, Gemtech, uh, their biologist and see how if we could release them at this time. Uh, but I, I, I'm unfortunately can't make promises at this uh, right now. Uh, so we have, I'll go through the list as people post in the chat and I will open it up to the phone callers as well. Uh, so D Alex has a number of comments and questions. I will open it up. I will unmute you. Oh, you're already unmuted. Please yep. let us know what your questions and comments are. Great. Thank you. Um, well, thanks very much, Aaron, uh, Taylor and Tyler. Uh, I was but Dave Alexander talking here. Uh, I have a few comments what I, that I'd like to go through first. Uh, may take a minute or two, and then I have some questions after. So, um, my wife, son, and I have lived in Fortress Falls for 20 years, and the pond was one of the, the more notable landmarks that we noticed when we first came here. And shortly after moving here, we found the, the beauty of the falls itself, the mill ruins, and the creek below. Uh, and I think it's a hidden gem from the area that, that shouldn't be lost. Um, one of the things I'd like to say about the meeting, uh, I realize that uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic here and an in-person meeting is, is not possible, but uh, just being aware of the demographics of the Foresters Falls area, we have a number of seniors in the area and a lot of people who, who have either no internet um, and may not have the capabilities or technical abilities to connect via phone to meetings like this. Um, and I understand that there, there are very few options available at this time, and, and that's quite understandable. But I'm pleased to see that we have uh, 38 people connected to the meeting. But I just want you to have a, an understanding that had it been an in-person meeting, that we would have probably had considerably more people here uh, attending. But it is what it is. So it's, it's a good thing we've got the meeting. Um, so just to summarize some of my concerns and different areas of concerns with the, the Forester Falls Dam and the head pond itself, uh, and I apologize if there's points that overlap, uh, some that have already been discussed, but I think if anything, it should uh, add strength to some of the ones that uh, Tyler had mentioned specifically. So um, some of the things that I'm gonna mention were mentioned by other community members who weren't able to attend tonight. Uh, so I'll just um, mention those briefly, but uh, from the environmental aspect, the pond uh, is a natural area for wildlife uh, and has been for well over a century. Um, probably closer to a century and a half if we go back and find the original origins of the dam. Um, and I think Kirby, who is hopefully still on the line, I know he was having some internet issues, uh, is a local biologist and he'll probably have a number of comments um, with regards to the environmental aspects of it in terms of species of fish, waterfowl, birds, turtles, bats, etc. Um, the other thing which was mentioned by another uh, resident, uh, Simon Tunley, was to do with um, the, the possibility of um, a drought coming in the Great Lakes Basin um, by 2030 that's been predicted by world scientists. Uh, he made reference to an article in the Globe and Mail uh, and basically striving that um, re retention of water areas and head ponds, et cetera, is probably something we want to try and uh, retain going forward. From the safety aspect, a um, couple of things that I noted myself. One is the uh, the do nothing option. Um, and I think as Tyler had mentioned there too, if the dam suddenly um, fails, 
uh, it could cause significant washouts downstream. I know that he mentioned that there wasn't anything significant there, but I know immediately below the dam, there is a very, very sharp turn um, greater than 90 degrees. Um, and it's a huge, huge, large clay bank. And I expect there would be a significant washout from that. And not too far from that is a home, um, which may or may not be impacted. I don't think it would fall over the bank, but it would be significantly impacted um, future from having that lack of um, soil there. So, uh, Also with regards to option two, decommissioning into the dam, um, I have some concerns there because many areas of that pond, and, and I think Tyler said it goes back upwards of two and a half kilometers, are sort of 50 to 60 meters wide. And if we go to what the county is calling natural landscape, and I don't know how you determine what natural landscape is, uh, given that this goes back to before most of our great grandfather's uh, time. But if, if we go back and reduce that head pond, I, I'm assuming you're going back to probably something that's less than 10 meters wide. So what does the, the 40 or 50 remaining meters uh, stay as? Is it a smelly, muddy mess um, with dying vegetation? Um, and would it be you know dangerous for things like wildlife, dogs, cats, children? Um, and what about the, the houses around it? Um, so if you're living right next to that pond, are you going to have to put up with, you know, unpleasant, disgusting smells for some period of time? And how will that affect things like property values? Uh, which is my next point, of course, property values. So uh, with option two, decommissioning the dam, how does that affect the property values in terms of looks, in terms of smell, et cetera? Uh, and also the, the general property values of the village itself. Um, without that pond, I think it would be slightly less appealing to um, people to purchase properties. From a historical and cultural perspective, um, I just want to mention I was fairly pleased at some of the information that uh, Tyler presented there, and I'm, I was quite happy that they uh, did that investigation. Um, we'd asked our uh, one of our local historians and archivists, uh, Faye Bennett from the Whitewater Historical Society to look up some information from us as well. And most of the information that we came up with uh, coincided with what um, Tyler had presented. Um, the mill was actually constructed after the community was settled. Typically it was the reverse for most communities. They would have a mill set up and then the community would build around it. Um, but Forster's Falls was actually an established uh, travel path or roadway that allowed travelers uh, to come by steamboat up to what was called the McLaren Slides on the Ottawa River and be able to come over and travel by road around the uh, rapids. Uh, the mill was actually built after that. So prior to the mill being built, there was actually a roadway and a bridge of some kind, which we weren't able to establish exactly what that was or where it was or what it looked like, but somewhere there, that did exist at that time. So. Um, the mill itself had several owners over various years, uh, burned down twice and was rebuilt twice. Uh, and then the third time it built down or burnt down in 1944, they, they chose not to rebuild it. So, um, however, if you, anyone has traveled the area, there is still uh, some ruins of the mill there that can be seen. So from a cultural aspect, uh, the pond, the dam and the falls are historically significant to the town and to the town's name, Forster's Falls. Many Visitors to our town do come to see the falls. Uh, it is actually on the Renfrew County Tourism Attractions list, along with the museum itself. Uh, it served as a recreational area for members of the community for fishing, kayaking, commuting, or canoeing, bird watching, uh, as well as just to sit and enjoy the picturesque view. Uh, historically, it had been used for skating as well uh, since the Forsters Falls rink was built in the uh, 1940s. I think there's been very little, if any, skating on it, but, uh, and also serves as a recreational, oh, sorry, I already said that one. Um, I had a comment just sent to me yesterday uh, from Murray Ditburner, who's a longtime resident of the area, uh, just moved away a few years ago, but somebody had mentioned to him about this upcoming meeting and some of the prospects for the dam. So he was quite concerned about it and mentioned some of his memories of fishing, gathering minnows at the pond, um, hanging around the, the creek below the dam, et cetera. So I think a lot of the sentiments that uh, Murray had passed on to me are also shared by a lot of seniors within the community. And for 
a lot of the people, or most of the people had grown up in the area over the last 150 years or so. So, and I think that leads into my next and, and final point here is the community member feedback. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's probably a lot of people that would have liked to attend that couldn't, uh, and knowing that was going to be the case, uh, we put out a survey at Annie's Gas Bar in Forester's Falls. It was uh, placed there on November 3rd, so just under two weeks ago. And as of today, we had over 150 names on it. And one of the things we asked for was, there was a copy of the, uh, the PIC report placed there, but we asked for their preferred option. And out of the 150 plus names, uh, there was one that uh, selected decommission the dam and all of the rest selected uh, replace the dam. So uh, hopefully that adds some clout to the option for that and will maybe add to your uh, criteria for doing that option. Um, and I understand that the, uh, a number of the community members had contacted the, the county directly with their individual and community-based concerns. One of the other things that we noted when we're talking to the uh, Whitewater Historical Society is that they noted an increase in traffic on their website in October and November um, with searches of things like waterfalls and dam near the top of their search queries as opposed to their usual queries of attractions, museums, rafting and things like that. So again, this shows interest from the community and concern from the community and beyond the community. Um, some additional ideas were put forward by several community members that I talked to uh, about not only maintaining the current uh, pond and dam, but also improving access for the community and tourists to be a, to have a view of the falls, the old mill ruins and the creek area below. And I think that's a great idea, um, but I do believe it goes beyond the scope of this meeting at this time. But I think it's something that uh, maybe viable to look at somewhere down the road, but if we lose the dam and or the pond, uh, it automatically rules out such an opportunity in the future. So we need to consider that. Uh, the Whitewater Township Council, I need to uh, give them a kudos here. Um, concerns were raised to the members um, of the council by the community and they showed that they shared their concern. A number of them came out to meet us at the dam last week. Uh, they heard our concerns and I believe they followed up with the, uh, the county shortly afterwards. So in summary, um, again, I was very pleased to see that the, the review and studies that have been done by the county um, seem to uh, take into account many, many of the aspects that we're hoping they would, including the historical and, and cultural studies. But in my view, it's, uh, it's very clear that the dam, the pond and the falls hold very great value to the members of the community in Forester's Falls and surrounding area. And that combined with the possible negative effects of safety, property values and environmental impact um, demonstrate the really to me is only one viable option uh, which is also I think demonstrated in the JL Richards evaluation matrix uh, that which is option three to uh, remove and replace the dam so I hope that the the county will will find that option and follow through with it so with that I just have a couple of other questions if, if I can just have another minute or two um, I think it was Aaron who talked about the uh, various schedules of uh, environmental impact. Who is it that decides whether it's a Schedule B or a Schedule C? What level of government decides that? So the uh, each uh, schedule is currently uh, has different requirements, uh, but depending on the type of project, um, it it does okay. follow a a a manual of which is a municipal class environmental assessment. Um, it, it encompasses many different types of projects. In this case, um, it's, a, it's obviously a, a dam. And uh, the, we, we followed the requirements and B was the most suitable. However, there is um, following different studies, there's always the op the well not option, but the potential of raising or decreasing depending on which option we, pr we proceed with. Um, I just noticed Erin unmuted herself so she can probably talk more about that. <laughs> yep, so um, there is sort of a evaluation that occurs early on in the process. It's up to the proponent to complete it and, and determine which schedule it falls under. Um, but 
Tyler pretty much covered all the big points that there's a manual that has to be followed. Um, and then there is at one point in the process, um, I don't know if you want to go back to that flow chart, Tyler, on the beginning of the presentation. Following phase two, we have to again reevaluate and demonstrate that it would meet the schedule B. There's the opportunity. So at the bottom of phase two, there's a arrow that leads kind of to the in between phase two and phase three. And right there is when we um, demonstrate again which schedule it's under. And there's the opportunity to be bumped up or bumped down to a different schedule. And, and who is the proponent and who makes these? this call as to what these schedules are. Is it the JL Richards or is it um, a Ontario um, agency or federal or who is it? In this case, it's JL Richards with uh, consultation with the county. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is up to us to demonstrate why we believe it meets a certain schedule and that is reviewed as well. And who do you demonstrate that to? The uh, municipal class EA uh, uh, committee. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I was drawing a blank on the name there. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> so the, the, this uh, government entity re will be reviewing like our project file and make sure that we are meeting their requirements of mm -hmm. an environmental assessment. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's you. not all third party and it's not nefarious, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just a couple other questions. Um, with regards to option two, to decommissioning the, the dam, um, given that it's been in place somewhere in the range of 150 years, how does the, the county or, or others determine what is the quote natural landscape? Uh, the design hasn't uh, been completed yet. So uh, I know one of the questions was what the headphones is gonna re resemble and it kind of goes through your point as well is that uh, at this time we can't really comment on that because we don't we don't know uh, without the further studies to perform that uh, that aspect of the project so we won't know until detailed design what's going to look like or uh, like you mentioned uh, the width of the the uh, of the river upstream uh, at this time yeah. um, i don't know uh, we, we haven't performed so, that. So before. nobody has a historical map or, or details of, of this is what it was in, you know, 1820 or whatever. No, we were not able to find anything, uh, including anything previously of the, uh, the current dam in 1935. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. yeah, we, we, we don't have any pictures or anything uh, previously to uh, what's there now. So related to that, uh, you'd mentioned that uh, Gentech recommends gradual drainage of the pond to minimize damage. So what sort of time frame would you be talking here? Are you talking weeks, months, years? It, it most likely will be months based on the depth of the water in the head pond. Um, it's it's right. more of a remove, uh, remove a bit of water, see what happens if there's any concerns uh, in the area. And if there's nothing for a certain amount of time, you, you draw a bit more down. It's not uh, a fixed interval. It's more of a wait and see, and then do more, and then do more. Uh, this would obviously right. be done only for option two. Um, yeah. Yeah. Option three, uh, there may be a gradual drawdown for dewatering because uh, replacing the dam, we would probably do, do, be doing a coffer dam. Uh, to isolate uh, the, the dam itself and have a, through uh, temporary creek diversions uh, because right. either that or pumping uh, to allow water to go downstream during construction. Um, that has not been designed yet or well, very preliminary thoughts right now for a project. Uh, typical, it's pretty typical to either do pumping or um, temporary diversion but how we yeah. do it is has yeah. not been uh, established yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm aware that pumping is a fairly common thing for, for small dams like this, so. Um, okay, so again, in that case of option two, uh, if we did it in terms of, you know, a period of months and you do wait and see, then um, A, there's, there's still going to be that, 
leftover, you know, mud, smell, dying vegetation, et cetera. And B, it sounds like at each step of it, there's, there's some risk that there may be something that causes you to have to um, change the process or delay the process or add additional costs. Is that correct? Yes, that, that is a, a possibility and a risk, and it is uh, part of the fact uh, factors are to determine the preferred solution. Okay. And at this point, do you have estimated costs for each solution? I know you showed sort of a yellow or, or red in your, your grid there, but I didn't see any actual figures. Uh, we don't have any finalized figures right now as we don't, uh, we haven't really discussed with the county exactly what they want uh, in terms of a new structure. The weir has been uh, preliminary accepted as a viable solution for the replacement in this case. Uh, but we wanted to see what the public thought of what it was as well. Um, we're trying to get away from the stop logs as uh, the nobody has touched the stop logs before, and I don't believe the county would like to play around with stop logs yeah. in, in the sure. future. There doesn't seem to be a need of uh, playing around with the water levels of, of the head pond uh, since nobody has done it in yeah. in record uh, history right now. Uh, for the option. One, it's very hard to determine exactly what happened. So I have a number for option three. Option one, uh, if there's flooding, there it's very hard to determine the impact. And it also would compensate. Right. That's, that's not the proper word. Uh, it would also include the uh, what to do with the dam afterwards, uh, the roadway, the impacts on uh, the environment, as well as what the regulatory agencies would actually force upon the county uh, following a dam break. Uh, they, can, they can mention a bunch of things, medication me measures, and, uh, fines could be a thing as well. So um, for the replacement of dam, we're, we're slightly over a million dollars. Uh, and for option 2A and 2B, we had a preliminary of 2A is obviously just a removal of the dam uh, with passive, so it, it's it's about uh, 300 to 500,000. But option B, uh, we need to perform more studies to do an active design of the roadway, or the, the waterway, sorry. So I don't have a, a figure for that one at this time. And does that option 2A include um contingencies for risks of things that may come up that you're not sure about as you you know slowly drain the pond it, it does a bit but if there's any big concerns it falls into option 2b okay okay uh i just have one final question and then i'll be quiet so i'm just gonna ask um so you mentioned that all the reports on that are going to be available in december on the website and we have a 30-day period to review those how do we get notified when that 30 day period starts? The notice of completion. Which goes, how do, how do I get the notice of completion? It would be the same uh, way that people have received a notice of uh, study commencement. Uh, it will be in the, the newspaper, the website. Uh, there will be, some people have received it on their, in their emails. Uh, Whoever uh, submitted a comment sheet at this time, we, we submitted them uh, the notice as well for the pick. Um, word to mouth is also pretty abundant, I, I can see from this yeah. the type of community that you have. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm looking for mostly is, is um, those that don't have sort of email and, and internet connections, how do they get notified, so. Yeah, okay. for the notice of the pick, my understanding is that uh, the notice was posted in the post office. Yeah, I put it there myself. Okay, uh, the, the township mentioned that they, they probably will be doing from for, from now on as well. Yeah, okay. Um, and we, we can post, put uh, the notices there as well. That's, that's no, uh, no issues. And just to add. Thank, thank you again. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Taylor. Uh, just to add, uh, you had mentioned early on that many people wouldn't be able to attend because of accessibility issues and things like that. I should have said it early on, but we've also put these slides in the post office in Forestford Falls, two copies of them for review, as well as oh. we've provided comment sheets at the Forestford Falls post office as well. 
for anyone that's unable Great. to get on the internet to get to the comment sheet, they can grab a hard copy there as well. Great. Well, thanks. Thank you very much, everyone, for your the meeting in that. And I'll, I'll step back and let others ask questions. Thanks. All right. So our next question we have is from Josh Alexander. It was mentioned that the dam did not meet the cultural heritage evaluation. Would you be able to speak to this assessment further? Um, sure. Um, I can't really add more than, than it was on, on the, the slide already. Uh, it's more that if it was the original dam, yes, there'd be more information uh, regarding the cultural heritage. It's, they're, they're more touching on the heritage part of it while the cultural part is, is this pick in terms of how it impacts uh, the society, um, which is what we're talking uh, while Josh, I know, uh, I've spoken to you on the phone uh, regarding uh, information in this project, but um, in terms of a dam itself, it's pretty typical dam. So it does not, for structural heritage, it doesn't pose any concerns. Also, the dam itself is not designated as a heritage structure. So that's uh, the main uh, assessment regarding this uh, this project itself is that there's no heritage values uh, for it. So that's that's all we can speak of right now. Obviously, we'll be adding information based on the comments we received uh, based on how uh, the community sees the, the dam itself in terms of their uh, cultural evaluation. All right. Uh, the next question is from A. Wait but it looks like it's been addressed. You, they are asking what the head pond would resemble. And as we've said at this time, we're not sure because that stage of the design is not taking place. Uh, Glenn Somerville has raised his hand to make a comment. Glenn, I'm gonna ask you to unmute now. Um, <clears throat> my, <clears throat> my question was um, for those of us who have uh, land upstream and who uh, see the creek as a very valuable resource, not only for uh, the wildlife that it sustains, but also uh, in terms of its ability to feed livestock, um, and have some might have some concern that uh, if you if you affect the uh, the head pond, are you going to increase the risk that uh, the flows of water in the creek might? Uh, be either reduced or, or even dry up at some periods uh, of the year. Uh, so that's a thanks. Thanks for the comment, uh, Glenn. Uh, really, uh, I do invite you to to submit a comment sheet because for a comment like that, um, it, it's a it's a nice comment to have in writing. Uh, to include in our report to uh, be able to uh, determine the, the impact on it. Uh, in terms of commenting on the fly like this, um, water will still be coming in. If you're upstream, the head pond shouldn't affect the water uh, coming in from further upstream. I'm not too sure how far your, your property is upstream, but uh, the head pond should not affect the inlet of water. Um, I'd be more concerned with the uh, the fields that are at the head pond itself with the water drying up there or not drying up but reducing in, in water level there. Uh, but I we can definitely uh, request some clarifications from our uh, hydro uh, geology department to uh, see how much of an impact that would be for uh, for the cows, I'm assuming livestock uh, cows being uh, upstream, depending right. on how far you are. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Patricia Rose asked, will the highway be widened to provide greater safety for walkers and bikers as they move from the village to the ballpark and play structures or continue down the road? So I'll touch this question. Currently the EA is for the dam alone. We are, once we know the option going forward with the dam, the county will 
begin further design on the road structure. But at this time, we need to know what the plan is for the dam so that we can do construction simultaneously to see some cost efficiencies in that regard. But that uh, comment will be taken into account whenever we begin the design for the culvert. Uh, Kirby, I'll come to you in just a moment. Bonnie Johnson asked, if the dam is replaced, is there a possibility of a turbine to be added for a small amount of power production? Uh, at this time, Bonnie, that has not been looked at. Should the dam be replaced, it may be something we consider, but at this time, we're still in the preliminary stages and it hasn't been considered. Uh, Kirby, if you'd like, I can open it up to you as, at this time. Okay, Taylor and everyone, thank you. I uh, appreciate uh, that you did a great job here. Um, a few things that uh, I've noticed, and are we getting an um, echo here? Sorry. Um, but one, one thing uh, that I'm concerned about is flash flooding if the dam was not there, because right now it's acting as a big sink to help reduce nutrients going down the system. One thing that uh, some may not be aware of, but uh, when it comes to fish habitat, the pond is a warm water fish community. So it's made up of bullheads or barbutt, uh, pike, perch, rock bass, largemouth bass. And a lot of them are associated with Gibson Lake upstream. But when you get below the dam, we have some cold water features and we still have brook trout found. So it's really the direct opposite of what you would notice in a, a normal fishery where you have headwaters that are cold and as you move down the system, you end up with warm water. And so I believe it was mentioned earlier that we have this segregation from the dam and uh, a lot of the fisheries, um, um, fish that are coming up the system can't go beyond the dam itself. But those cold water uh, brook trout that are found downstream are, are, you know, behind the falls and they are associated with uh, the veins and arteries that come off of Brooms Creek's system there. So if we were to actually remove the dam, there is concerns that um, more sedimentation that may come down because the pond is not a sink anymore may affect that cold water fishery. So um, those that's one of the concerns that I have from a fisheries perspective and I hope the county and JL Richards is aware that we do have that significant fishery downstream and many of the locals would tell you that they are there and still uh, see them and catch them but uh, it's it's getting to be a more of a rare case. Um, also, it, we've had one season of surveys here, and um, uh, I, I'm hoping that there's enough information out there, Taylor, uh, coming from uh, participants that you can make a really sound decision on uh, what's, what's there in, in that area of the pond when it comes to fish and wildlife values. Uh, another question I had is when we talk about geomorphology of the water system, was there any bathymetry done to actually determine where that channel may have been before the dam went in? And uh, you mentioned also a coffer dam going in, which I thought was uh, really a good idea, you know, because there's a lot of silt and sediment that's uh, in front of that structure that could potentially affect the spawning habitat that's down below in the, uh, the, the falls itself. So moving forward, I think you've done a great job and I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that uh, you're keeping the um, comment period open until early December so we can actually get more comments into uh, all, all that are involved here. And uh, that's pretty well it for now. And uh, Taylor, if you do have an opportunity that we can chat another day, I'd appreciate it very much. Sounds cur good, Kirby. We can open that up or we can get in touch, sorry. Okay, thank you. 
relating to your bathometry, we did do a bathymetric uh, survey of the, uh, the head pond. Um, what we didn't do at this time, and we're, we're planning on doing it, uh, depending on which option we, pr we proceed with, is an in-depth bathymetry where we would uh, provide further geotechnical information within the, the head pond, so further samples um, within the head pond to see exactly what, uh, give a, a timeline, as you said. Maybe um, if you have a sec, you can explain what bathymetry means. Maybe there's some that don't understand. So we, we took a, a topographic survey of the stream bed of uh, that's the bathymetric survey is the elevation of, of uh, how the head pond is for the, the stream bed uh, within that area to determine the slopes to see how the depth of the water at the time uh, at the time of the uh, the survey is taking as well as um, at the dam or at the culvert itself. Uh, what we have noticed is that there's quite a bit of sediment uh, deposits at the dam, which is uh, very common, especially if the stop logs have not been uh, touched in so long. Uh, so it actually goes up at the, at the, at the culvert and uh, obviously it's a bit deeper in the middle. Um, we haven't provided, like, although we did in a sampling of the stream bed, we didn't do extensive sampling to determine um, how far we would have to go in terms of uh, removal of sediment if we were to proceed with option 2B. And that would be required uh, more extensive bathymetry to get uh, that going. So that silt that we're talking about, that silt buildup in the pond, the pond is acting like a huge sink to help reduce the nutrients that are coming off the farm uh, adjacent to and by doing so, it's helping to continue uh, better water quality downstream. So one of my biggest concerns here is if we were to remove the pond, what does that mean for fisheries downstream and water quality all the way to the Ottawa River? Thank you. Uh, so I'm not seeing any further questions in the chat window. And sorry, thank you, Kirby, for your comments. I'm going to open it up, recognizing that the phone callers cannot enter into the chat. I'm going to unmute the phone callers at this time to see if there's any questions or comments there. Hi, I Jane Nesbitt called talking and many people have covered many of the concerns that I've had. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to fill in a comment sheet yet, having just learned about the, uh, the meeting recently. But with regards to the agricultural component, the availability of water is vastly dependent on the inflow of water and how the water is delayed by the head pond and then runs out. And has there been any determination as to those volumes? For, you, you mean regarding the, the inflow of the current uh, system right now? Yes, and what they would be in comparison if, uh, if there wasn't that. Like, I know that there's a, a lot of farms through the Car Line, Forsters Falls area, right through the Queen's Line and the Fourth Line, almost to 417, that rely on that creek to to water their cattle. And my concern would be with if it was left to nature, taken, removed and just left to nature, number one, that the water flow would not be 
substantial enough to support those cattle and other livestock, but also the amount of nutrients that are coming down the river off field runoff and because of those livestock is substantial. And if they have to wade through several feet and yards of muck on the banks that are now drained, that sediment coming down the, the creek is going to be magnified many tens of times because of their disturbance trying to get to water. I, I don't believe we took that into consideration regarding the cows. Um, I will, if, if you provided uh, the question in writing uh, when you have a chance, I will reach out to uh, our uh, fluvial geomorphic uh, consultant regarding that aspect. Um, obviously, it'd be different at different stages of the uh, of the upstream uh, stream, mostly because uh, the impact will be different as f further you are from the from the head pond. Um, we we can't we we can't take that, that into consideration. Uh, definitely, but I don't believe we have as of yet. Well, I know there's probably lots of farmers up there that would hope you would take it under consideration. And I believe it was, um, uh, who was it? Dave Somerville has brought those concerns to the forefront already. Although I certainly will mention them on my com comment sheet. And just in support of what Kirby said, if anyone has made the trek down below that dam, the difference in the water quality, I was surprised to hear that the study showed that they were similar because appearance-wise, the, the head pond water appears much more murky, uh, almost stagnant, there's water lilies and you know, um, various pond vegetations around. Whereas if you go downstream, it's a fast moving, crystal clear, pristine creek down there with a vast amount of minnows and fish and crayfish that it's like two different ecological pictures. And I was surprised to see that your studies basically equated them. And the other concern I had, had was with doing the studies for the most part this year to determine what direction you're going to go into. I dare say the drought that was there this spring and fall would skew the results of normal water levels and water flow this year. Um, I'll, I'll mention the, the, I'll just refer to the first question regarding the two environments uh, regarding the studies. I think there's a, a bit of a miscommunication. Uh, if you're basing yourself on what I mentioned, um, I was go. I was mentioning the consistency over the year, not the uh, the same quality upstream and downstream. I was just mentioning that they they visited multiple times over the year to determine if it was consistent or uh, fluid in in quality. Um, they they are two different environments uh, in terms of upstream downstream. Uh, I've seen the crayfish as well uh, downstream. And uh, yes, it, I, I agree with you that they, they are two different uh, water qualities uh, up and, and up and down the stream. Regarding your uh, question, uh, your, your, your second point, um, I, as I mentioned before, I, 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 I invite you to, to write down that question, that question on site or on the comment sheet, mostly because um, I'm not sure if it was clear 
Um, anything mentioned verbally uh, is, is more for clarifications regarding the studies and that only anything written down will be submitted in the project file. Um, Correct. So it, with, with question, questions such as that, um, having it in writing is, is best, I guess. Um, yes, I understand that and I will be submitting a comment sheet. I appreciate it, thank you. And for me, I think that, uh, again, you know, I have heard and support a lot of the comments that have been put forth. And I know it is a substantial cost to the county. One, obviously, having just been made aware that you're responsible for, you have done no advanced planning on. But it is integral, integral not only to the community, but to those two wildlife habitats it wants to take it out and just blend those. I can't see where that's going to be. It's going to put all the species, warm and cold water species at risk. And we have several, I mean, I'm also a turtle mover, you know, that, uh, I don't think anybody in that area that crosses that bridge hasn't at least once in their lifetime stopped and moved a turtle off that road. And it's, it's concerning that I would really encourage, and I will be in the comment sections as well, for a replacement of the dam decision. Now, what form that dam is, I would leave entirely to the uh, the county planners, of course. Thank you for your comments. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions at this time? Another one just came out on text there, Taylor. Is it known where the next dam or weir is upstream? This question from Josh Alexander. I don't believe that within the study area there was one. Um, I'd have to confirm, but I, I don't believe there was one within the study area. We haven't gone all the way upstream to the, the source. Um, but I can get back to you on that if, if you're uh, really interested. Yeah, no, I was just um, wondering whether or not it was within, if there was one within the study area. So uh, thanks for clarifying that. Are there any other questions or concerns? I would like to say something, Taylor. Yes, please proceed, Mayor Moore. Okay, for everyone sitting down at a desk today, thank you very much for all the work that's gone into this. I know this was thrown at the county at the last minute. Um, municipally, we had no idea that we, we that nobody actually took ownership of it until last year. So a lot has happened within the last year. Um, uh, thank you to Mr. Perkins and uh, everyone, all your staff for um, making sure that it's brought to the forefront. Um, just from a standpoint view of being in a municipal council, um, I, I can't see why it would even be an option to take this dam out um, just ecologically. Uh, what this uh, mill pond actually does downstream and upstream, um, it would certainly be a a shame to lose it. So um, I'm glad that everyone is ahead of me, like 149 people or whatever have said option three. So I'm definitely an option of um, number three. And I can't see any of the, our other council members and our staff um, uh, stating anything else, but I can't talk for them. Um, 
I, I, I would be in favor though, if, if things don't go too good, that um, maybe we could hold this off for a year, even though I know the road is scheduled. Um, if we do run into problems, let's not rush it. Let's make sure we do it right. And that's all I have to say, thank you. And I think there's somebody on the phone who wants to say something. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Moore. I'll just add, I've received a comment from Kirby Punt. There are no dams located upstream of this one. And the caller, I apologize for muting you. If you want to unmute again now, you may to pose your questions or comments. Yes, no, I'm fine. And uh, again, I just want to take the opportunity to thank everyone involved in doing this presentation and for listening to our comments tonight and reiterate that my choice would be to, uh, to replace the, uh, the current dam with some structure. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we've had another caller that's unmuted. Not receiving any comments or questions. Daryl, I saw that your hand was raised. Sorry, Councillor McLaughlin. Yes, Taylor, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I just a clarification because some of the research I have done, I, I hear the the creek are called McNaughton's Creek. Uh, I don't know if uh, Taylor is or Tyler is uh, the the historical the the group that were doing this study, if they were aware of that or not. What about the uh, the stream? Sorry, <clears throat> the the difference in the name not not called Brooms Creek, but called McNaughton's Creek. Because some of the studies that I have read, it uh, it seems very confusing because there's some some studies that uh, refer to it as McNaughton's Creek. Oh, I'm. I, I was not aware of that. I, I apologize. Maybe I, I should have. Uh, it, it was. It has not been brought up to me uh, previously. <clears throat> I just thought I would mention that because maybe that would back further, find find some further studies on it, uh, as far as uh, historical uh, significance. Councillor McLaughlin, can you spell that? Do you have the proper spelling? I am sorry, I do not. Uh, I can give it to you if you want. It's M C N A U G H T O N McNaughton, uh, and that's all the historical references I got from that area did refer to it as McNaughton's Creek. Thank you, Dave. Uh, from Kirby Punt, he agrees that historically it's been called McNaughton's Creek as well.
Are there any other questions or concerns at this time? Or comments, sorry? I, I just want to mention, I, I'm just reviewing the uh, heritage report again, and it, it does make reference to McDonnell and Creek. Um, so it, it has been taken into account uh, in the report that will be available uh, with the project file. Okay. Just so all are aware, we are here until eight o'clock. So if there are any questions, concerns between now and then, please bring them up. And if there's any latecomers, we welcome any questions or concerns from them as well. I have a question for Lee, if Lee is still on. Um, now that that conversation is, we've just had from uh, two different names naming this creek, I'm wondering if there'd be any early information um, prior to 1935 in the county records. Um, because at that time, the bridge wasn't built by the county, but I don't know when the county actually physically took over the road. Would you have any idea? No, not offhand me or more, but I assume it was in the download from MTO in the 90s. But we can definitely look into it and find out for sure. Because, uh, like I say, this started out as a culvert repair. We found out we owned the dam. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I did like the generating. I did like the generating idea, and that's something that uh, I, I, I'm interested in. If we can make money back on it, because obviously, when we share this with the town of Whitewater. You know the cost we may want to get some recovery so <laughs> <laughs> certainly <laughs> but no i must say it was it's awesome for i realized this is not as not as enjoyable as being in a group of people and stuff and and you know the times are as they are but i'm so pleased to see everyone that got on board and also the comments that's that's come into myself and tyler and taylor and the team that's putting all this together is uh, yeah, we, we obviously know the significance and the importance of the, of the Forester Falls. There's no, there's, no, there's no ambiguities there amongst everything. It's just that when it gets to council and committee, as you guys know, it's a money issue. So, but I'm sure that- okay. I'm sure that Keeping with the money, keeping with the money sure. issue then. Yeah. When, when the top platform goes to be redone, is there any thought of raising that road um, in, in so on, no on certain turns raising the level of the pond as well no, I, I definitely don't think there will be any raising of the pond I, if anything we'll, we'll maintain it as to what it was with the weird design that the jlr has come up with uh, and and my my hope would be that the roadbed would be wider for for pedestrians and for cyclists like that would be my my anticipation but again the road on each side is not wide enough but you know, there is enough room on, each, on the shoulders for, for people, but as you know, going across that is pretty narrow, so. But no, it's, uh, it's like I say, it's a lot of information to take in for this evening, and, and I really thank everyone for getting on. And, and I must say, we'll, well, we'll, we'll continue to work with JLR, and, and we'll bring it back to committee, and, and uh, we'll start the process for sure, because we got, the culvert got to be fixed at some point, no matter what. <laughs> So what we do on the, on the other side, on the downstream side, is, is, is what comes of it. But, uh, but as you've seen from the rendering that the JLR provided, I mean, that, that to me is, a, is definitely a, an aesthetically pleasing project for sure. But I'm not a politician. Okay, so thank you. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for putting this off, Taylor. Really good. And, and Tyler as well. And, and especially Aaron, thank you again. To the team for for doing it so uh, it's a it's a different way of doing it that's for sure and, and we do realize that the the community down there is is uh, not all seniors but it's definitely a, a more elderly population so and, and thanks to, to the ladies and gentlemen that have been putting stuff in the post office for us and of course if anyone has any issues certainly give us a call at the office and uh, 
And when we're back in the office, we'll be able to take the calls. <laughs> but we, our voice man managing and everything, all that still works. So we still get back to people. So, so we're still, we're working through all this COVID stuff. So. But there actually is a positive to this, you know, because the Historical Society in Forsters Falls only has what people are giving them. So maybe now some people will open their trunks, et cetera. And it could be interesting as to what kind of information comes next yeah, on exactly. the history of that. I know, I know Mr. McQuay, uh, whose wife passed away recently, they have a tremendous amount of information there. She was, she was doing some really great stuff with the turtles and stuff. So, and I've been down there to visit Jim a few times. So, and unfortunately, like I say, he's, he's one of the gentlemen that that's not online this evening, but, uh, but yeah, he's got some great information there. There has to be an upside, right? We have to have a positive. We can't have all negative. Exactly. That's right. And it is one of the most beautiful places in the county. So, you know, and I get to travel all over the county on motorcycle and going across Forester Falls is, a, is an enjoyable ride, let me tell you. And of course, the lady who looks after the store down there. Well, it's amazing. <laughs> and yes, but it's, it's amazing. Um, uh, the traffic count in the summertime, it's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. It's hopefully, once the COVID gets straightened away and all these people that have learned about the county of Renfrew by coming up and visiting, they'll, they'll be back and, uh, and spread some money around to help pay for this with the town of Whitewater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Reeve, you're on. Hey, Reeve. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just add, too, Lee, like, uh, you know, I, I'm glad you brought up about. Uh, you know the road itself and and whatnot because i think as miss crows mentioned it is i think critical that we do something there because it is so dangerous and there is a lot of cyclists there is a lot of pedestrians a lot of children that use that bridge to get over to the uh, community center so i think it's uh we definitely have to keep that in the equation for sure yeah i i, yeah. I hear you loud and clear on that one that's not a yeah that's not a hard sell when we got to dig up. No, yeah. Just want to keep it on the forefront because you never know when the dollars start talking what happens, that's, right? That's right. And, and, <laughs> and the township of Whitewater, a couple of hundred thousand more, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting project. Unfortunately, like say, we didn't find it, we had a dam, so we got it all worked out. So everything has been delayed by a few, by, by a year anyways, minimum. So. Yeah. Well, that's all good. Uh, we have a caller who's unmuted. Is yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I don't know. We had some issues with our phone, so my phone line is not working. I'm trying to use a cell phone with a one bar. So mm -hmm. we're kind of pretty remote out here. Uh, it's Harry Aswell. Uh, we operate the Annie's Gas Bar. Uh, we get a lot of tourists. Uh, we've been there 25 years. And uh, I get all kinds of people come off the highway because of that sign on 17 that says Forster Falls in this direction. And they want to see the falls. And so I send them down, uh, uh, give them direction and stuff like that. So there's a lot of interest. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, dam there, uh, if it needs a repair, uh, uh, as you guys are saying, uh, a weir would be the ideal way to do it. Uh, repair the dam, spend the money there. Uh, I don't think we need so many studies and spend the money there. Uh, we know what the outcome is going to be with the uh, uh, the buildup of uh, the uh, sediment that's on the other side. We know what's going to happen with the properties that are next to the pond uh, because all clay is going to get washed out. Uh, it's all common sense. Uh, we don't need to uh, uh, spend the money on the studies spend the money on the dam. Uh, if you're gonna do something, county has the opportunity to put the walkway and beautify that area, maybe even put a lookout towards the, uh, the uh, fall side. Uh, and uh, somebody mentioned uh, putting a hydro generator. Uh, if that's possible, maybe they'll uh, uh, pay for the whole dam as well as on top, maybe even generate some money. Uh, I think those are all good ideas. Uh, environmentally, we're talking about building windmills. I think this is a better idea using hydro uh, generator uh, instead of putting a windmill. Uh, so overall, it can be paid for and more uh, over time, leaving the uh, the beauty of the town there. 
as well as uh, uh, history-wise, historically, uh, how far do we want to go? A uh, hundred years from now, we'll be looking at this time. This is part of the history as well. A lot of these uh, people, uh, my age, I'm 55. We, uh, you know, my kids grew over here, grew up. Uh, you know, uh, pond was uh, kind of uh, a hangout for them uh, because uh, the beauty of uh, the natural beauty is there. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be talking about this in the future as well. That's going to be history. So I think, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, just by looking at it and uh, listening to you guys, I think it's, uh, the option three is the only way, uh, you know, and uh, take the opportunity of putting walkways on both sides for the kids to safely, uh, you know, get across to the ball diamond, uh, as well as maybe even a lookout. All righty. And, uh, you know, uh, I think can be done. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I just want to add that there was to re to revisit the comment about the studies that have been done. I just want to add that much of the studies that have been completed would be required whether the dam was decommissioned or replaced. Uh, as part of the A process, we were required to look at the options going either way, just to add that in as well. We have a question here as well. Are we able to access the slideshow from tonight's meeting? We're currently working on having the slideshow posted on the county website. As well, there's hard copies of the slideshow at the Forsters Falls post office to be reviewed there as well. We have about five minutes left. Are there any other comments, questions, concerns? As we've said multiple times, make sure that you submit a comment form to ensure that all your comments are included in the final report as well. Also take a moment to say thank you to everyone for coming out. It's been, we're very happy with the turnout we've seen and we're very happy that everyone's given our their feedback, comments, and questions. We're glad that uh, we are able to post this tonight. Okay. No one else got any other questions. Just a quick comment. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank or thank the uh, the county and the the Whitewater Region Council for this this meeting. I think uh, I've actually been pleasantly surprised with. Uh, the, uh, the content that was pre presented uh, and what was investigated and uh, the direction that I think things are hopefully going, but uh, it looks like you've done uh, an adequate amount of uh, background and research on it. So thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. And I might add, Thank you as well for the feedback you provided before the meeting. It uh, helped us get ready and be prepared. Uh, so the comment we have here, there are only two copies of the slideshow at the Fortress Falls Post Office. That is correct. And if we, at this time, they're there for viewing purposes, uh, we will work on getting more copies out there as well so going forward. And from A. Wait, I very much agree, Dave, and thanks to you as well for presenting the concerns of our neighbors. Taylor, can I just ask, is there any way we can uh, download this onto YouTube like we have with our county council meetings or our Whitewater meetings? The session's recorded, so I will look into that, actually. Yeah, that would be probably That's very helpful. Idea. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for checking that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one person who just is joining. They may have a comment or question. They're just connecting their audio there now. 
Well, if there are any other comments, questions, concerns, we have two minutes remaining. Please uh, unmute and feel free. All right, as I said, thank you all who were able to attend. And thank you to Tyler and Aaron for presenting tonight. Uh, I believe everyone agrees it was a very detailed presentation and we very much appreciate all the information you guys were able to provide. For sure. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Thank you. <clears throat> it's great to get all these heads together. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. Thank you.